All right, hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to do the first 15 problems from the second practice test in the Barron's book. So here we go for this first one. Okay, so first instinct for any limit problem, what happens if we plug in? If we plug in up top, we get four minus two. In the bottom, we get four minus four. So that's two over zero. That does not approach a number. So that is non-existent, right? Maybe it goes to infinity, but it's definitely not a number. Another limit problem here. <clears throat> okay, x is going to infinity, so only the biggest stuff matters. The biggest term in the top is root x. The biggest term in the bottom is negative 3 root x. So that basically approaches negative 1 third, because those root x's just cancel out. So number 2 is a. All right, for three, there is a trick here to spare you a lot of time from doing chain rule. e to the natural log of u is u. So we have u over u, which is one. The derivative of that is zero. Okay, we're going to estimate with a tangent line. So tangent line means we want to think about a point. Our point is at x equals zero and f of zero is the square root of nine plus sine of two times zero. That's two times zero is zero, sine of zero is zero, so this is the square root of nine, this is three. So our point here is basically zero comma three. And we need a slope. So my slope, f prime of x, let me do this on the side. Uh, sorry about that f prime of x would be one half this thing to the negative one half times the derivative of the inside, which is cosine two x times two. If I plug in zero, that's one half times nine to the negative one half times cosine of zero, which is one times two. The two and the one half cancel. We have nine to the negative one half, which is one third. So our point is 0, 3, our slope is 1 third. We have y minus our given y coordinate is slope times x minus our given x coordinate. That works out to y equals 1 third x plus 3. And finally, if we plug in 0 0.06, we will get 3.02. <coughs> Okay, um, just looking at this, I feel like this is wordier than a regular AP free response would be, but let's see. We have a table of time and students per minute. This is students getting dropped off at school. And what is the approximate number of students dropped off at school during the first 30 minutes if we use a trapezoidal sum? So S is a rate. So we really want to find the definite integral of a rate to figure out the number of students. And if we use a trapezoidal sum, our first interval is 10 minutes wide, and the average of the first and last values is 14. Trapezoidal sum is how long is it times the average of the beginning and ending values. This is 19. And then the last one is five units wide, and the average is 22. Uh, I think this is a bit too much to do without a calculator. These Barron's problems, I think, on average, are a little bit harder. Um, this is 285, if I'm doing it correctly in my head. This is 110. So when you add these together, 535 looks correct. I don't think you're doing that much arithmetic without your calculator on a real AP test. Okay, this is just chain rule. Let's just remember that sine cubed really means we're taking sine of this thing and raising the whole thing to the third power. So our derivative here would be 3 times sine of 1 minus 2x squared times cosine of 1 minus 2x times the derivative of the inside, which is negative 2. So the 3 times negative 2 give us negative 6. 
and there's a sine squared and there's a cosine, so it looks like it is D. Okay, seven is just product rule with a chain rule step. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Derivative of one over x is negative one times x to the negative two. We can factor out, oh, let's actually simplify this, the second term. Because we'll notice the x squared and the x to the negative two cancel, we actually have this. So that looks like it is b after we factor it. All right, a point moves along the curve y equals x squared plus one so that the coordinate is increasing at the constant rate of three halves units per second, the rate in units per second, which the distance from the origin is changing. Okay, so di you need to know distance formula to do this. We have a point like so. Here is x comma x squared plus one. Ideally, you know distance formula, but you can do it with Pythagorean theorem. This distance is the square root of, right here is 0, 0. How far apart are the x-coordinates? That's just x, and we square it. How far apart are the y-coordinates? And we square that. This is, this is far more tedious than a real AP problem would be. So when we take the derivative here, so the derivative with respect to x would be 1 half times this whole thing to the negative one half times the derivative of the inside, which is two x plus two times x squared plus one to the first times the derivative inside, which is two x. If we plug in x equals one, looks like we have one and then this thing here is, uh, let's see, so x is 1, so 1, 2, this is 5, 5 to the negative 1 half times in parentheses here. This, is, this problem is far more tedious than a real AP problem would be. Um, let me give myself more room to do this cleanly. Typically, real multiple choice problems, it's just a couple of steps. This one they're making much harder. So distance as a function of x, let me write it nice and clearly. It's the difference in the x-coordinates squared plus the difference in the y-coordinates squared. Add them together and take the square root. So what we really have here is x squared plus x squared plus 1 quantity squared all to the 1 half. So d prime of x is 1 half times this whole thing to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside. If I plug in x equals 1, I'll try to do it cleaner this time. Here I have 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 2, square that is 4. And then here we have 2 plus 2 times 2 times 2. So this looks like it's 1 half times 5 to the negative 1 half times 2 plus 8, which is 10. So this works out to 5 over root 5, which is actually root 5. But we want to know the rate at which this is changing over the course of time. So that's the rate at which distance changes. Let me write this clear. Again, don't panic. This is way harder than a real free uh, real multiple choice would be. The rate at which that distance changes with respect to time, you can get by multiplying these two rates together. So it would be root 5 times, and then they said the other one was 3 halves. So root 5 times 3 halves. That is B. Okay, number 9. You want to recognize that? <coughs> Pardon. For number 9, you want to recognize that pattern. You are taking a derivative. Right, this thing here, right? if you write it as the square root of 25, we notice that it is the different definition of a derivative. We're looking at the square root function, and we're basically saying, what's the derivative when x is equal to 5? So f prime of x is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. f prime of 5 is 1 half times 
5 to the negative 1 half. Um, oh no, it's 25. Sorry about that. Yikes. Good thing my answer wasn't listed. Right, we want to know what is the derivative when x is 25. I'm already thinking about the answer. So the derivative is 1 half times x to the negative 1 half. So if we plug in 25, it's 1 half times 25 to the negative 1 half, which is 1 half times 1 over 5. So our answer is 1 tenth, which is b. Okay. Base of a solid in the first quadrant region bounded by y equals the fourth root of 1 minus x squared. Each cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis is a square with one edge in the xy plane. Again, harder than a real AP problem. This function only makes sense if x is between negative 1 and 1. The graph is something like so. It is not a semicircle. But what we're doing is we're saying... Right, here's x. This is the base of a square. So the area is this thing squared, which is a fourth root squared actually gives us a square root. And this one is a semicircle. So we want the definite integral from negative 1 to 1 of this function, which is basically saying what is the area of this semicircle going from negative 1 to 1. So the circle has a radius of 1, so the area of the circle would be pi r squared, which is pi. We want half of that, so that would be pi over 2. Um, Oh, and, but yikes, it says first quadrant. So we don't want to go from negative 1 to 1. We just want to go from 0 to 1. Sorry about that. We want that. So we want 1 fourth of the circle. Okay, number 11. We can try u substitution here. These problems are, on average, considerably harder than the real AP. You can take these as like practice. So if u is 9 minus x squared, then du over dx is negative 2x. So du is negative 2x dx dx is du over negative 2x. So when I make my substitution, I have x, I have the square root of u, and then dx is du over negative 2x. Those x's cancel, so I have negative 1 half times u to the negative 1 half. So this is negative 1 half times integral here, it's like so. So we have negative u to the 1 half plus c, which is negative the square root of 9 minus x squared plus c. And that is c. Okay, 12. Rewrite it so it's easy. Foil it out. What we have here is y squared minus 2y plus 1, if we FOIL out the top, over 2y. Break that up into three different fractions. y squared over 2y minus 2y over 2y plus 1 over 2y. So what we're actually integrating, if you do them one at a time, is 1 half of y minus 1 plus 1 half of 1 over y. We're integrating that. So we have... 1 fourth y squared minus y plus 1 half natural log of the absolute value of y. And that is, uh, which one is this? That is a. Okay. Cotangent of x. The integral of cotangent of x, we have to do something clever here. 
again, I want to reassure you that these are harder on average, right? Any one of these might show up on the AP, but they would not have as many of these hard ones, right? So take these as like good, tough-ish practice problems, but not really a sample test. Some of these review books, they intentionally make them harder so that you're really geared up. So cotangent is cosine over sine. If we write it that way, we might understand that this is doable by a U substitution. This is the derivative of that. Okay, so if you did use substitution, I'm going to skip some of these steps. But if we looked at it like this, okay, if I had natural log of sine of x, the derivative of that would be 1 over the something, 1 over sine of x, times the derivative of sine of x, which is cosine. So that's actually the antiderivative here. So this is the natural log of sine of pi over 2 minus the natural log of sine of pi over 6. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So this is 0 minus the natural log of 1 half. And if we look at our choices, right, so this is just natural log minus the natural log of 1 half. That's not listed. So here's the really tricky thing. 1 half is 2 to the negative 1, so this is minus minus natural log of 2. It's actually natural log of 2. I don't think you would expect that much trickery in one problem on the real AP. Okay, for 14, f prime is graphed. What could be the graph of f? So let's just notice f prime is positive until we get to x equals 2. So that means f is increasing from 0 to 2. Let's just look for that first. So this one's good, this one's good, this one's good. Okay. Then it is decreasing, right? F prime is then negative. So we want increasing, then decreasing. So that rules out this one. Okay. Um, we will notice that 1 and 3 are basically the same shape, just higher. Right? If one function is just another one shifted up, then all the steepnesses are the same. So if one works, three also works. So this would be D. And then the last one in this group. Okay, so we had a women's record in the marathon. It stood until 1963. And then soon after, after times began dropping rapidly. But lately, they have been declining at a much slower rate. Right, so let's think about this. Here's time. Here's the record. They've been, the record has been going down. But lately, it has been going down at a slower rate. It looks like this. Right, it's still going down, but it's not dropping as fast as it used to be. Right, and here, M is actually the the times, right? So here we're graphing the record time. So which of these are positive? Is M positive? Yeah, right? The times are positive numbers. Nobody runs a marathon in a negative amount of time. Is M prime positive? No, right? We're, M prime is negative. This is decreasing. But this graph is smiling. It's concave up. So M double prime is positive. So one and three are positive. This should be C. So that is it for one through 15.